anyone who's followed my videos over the years knows that um, I've always described myself as someone who's most comfortable around atheists, although I don't really like to have the term atheist applied to me. I don't really object all that much, but um, I think that it's somewhat inaccurate, um, at least in terms of what I believe um, the baggage behind the term atheist to be. So certain things, uh, certain assumptions that seem to be inherent in the term atheist don't necessarily apply to me. Um, and one of the interesting things is this sort of idea that if um, you simply don't subscribe to common conceptions of divinity, i.e. the ones uh, that say that there's a, a god up there that's somehow separate from us and is the source of life or whatever, you know, the usual conceptions of God. If you don't subscribe to that, then somehow you automatically have all kinds of other things flow from that. In other words, um, what we would colloquially, I suppose, call scientism or the idea that we're simply uh, some sort of... Um, our consciousness is just some sort of random evolution of the physical universe. Um, <clears throat> and um, not only that, not only all these um, additional things besides simply not subscribing in something, being a non-stamp collector, um, but an aversion to even looking into the possibilities that we may be something other than just um, the result of something else. <laughs> In other words, our consciousness might be something else other than uh, just a random series of things that evolved over the eons and that will go bing, lights out when we snuff it. Um, looking into that takes on, to some atheists I suppose, um, the dynamic of heresy, I suppose. Um, you're not only supposed to just not believe in God, the, the, the way that God is normally described, um, you have to have all these other beliefs, and you have to have this sort of belief that there is nothing. I'm not saying that all atheists believe this, by the way, but it does seem, it does seem to me as though um, the thinking, uh, or at least a stream of it, has militated in this direction. <clears throat> um, for example, is... I suppose the term a monist or a person who speculates into say the Neoplatonic one, the absolute, uh, the unity of everything, is is that person an atheist? One could say that they are, although it doesn't really necessarily like Buddhism, it doesn't preclude the existence of gods, but it does say that gods themselves or a god or god or whatever is uh, just another aspect of the one is that person an atheist? <laughs> um, let's say that you don't believe in any of that, but you still do subscribe to the idea, or you are interested in the idea of the one. In other words, you haven't just reached this conclusion that there is no God, that there is no nothing, and then it's just lights out at death and everything like that. You haven't subscribed to this, but you don't believe in God. Are you an atheist? <laughs> See why I don't like that kind of a title. Um, well, there does seem to be a bit of that going on these days in the atheist community, and to the point where people get sort of angry with you when you just, you don't even say that you believe any of this stuff, but you allow your speculations to move in that general direction. They say, look, you're going horribly wrong. You can't do this. It's a terrible, this is this is the slippery slope towards um, kneeling in the pew back at the church again. Next thing you know, you'll be uh, sitting in the lotus position at the feet of a guru, calling him master. You can't do that. Well, I don't know. I think that fear is not a good thing on which to base one's beliefs. Fear of infection. I understand that a healthy dose of skepticism towards other people's beliefs, or any other belief out there, belief itself, is good. But fear? Fear of infection? Fear of where your speculations might lead you? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, fear, if you ask me, is the enemy of inquiry. You can't be afraid, or else um, you'd better go back to the safety of the church, or the whatever you want to call it, the safety of certainty, I suppose one could call it. And again, um, the atheist discourse is not immune to this sort of thing. Uh, there's a chapter or a passage from one of my favorite books of all time, George Orwell, 
um, where he describes a modern political version, or a satirically modern political version, of, um, of a heresy and the proper way to believe in the dominant ideology, um, which uh, in his dystopian superstate of the future, which was the future, <laughs> um, is uh, Ingsoc, English Socialism, a sort of Stalinism gone nuts. Um, <clears throat> he writes, Consider, for example, such a typical sentence from the Times' leading article as Old Thinkers Unbelly Feel Ingsoc. The shortest rendering that one could make of this in old speak would be Those whose ideas were formed before the revolution cannot have a full emotional understanding of the principles of English socialism. But this is not an adequate translation. To begin with, in order to grasp the full meaning of the Newspeak sentence quoted above, one would have to have a clear idea of what is meant by Ingsoc. In addition, only a person thoroughly grounded in Ingsoc could appreciate the full force of the word bellyfeel, which Im implied a blind, enthusiastic acceptance, difficult to imagine today, or of the world old think, which was inextricably mixed up with the idea of wickedness and decadence. But the special function of certain new speak words, of which old think was one, was not so much to express meanings as to destroy them. These words, necessarily few in number, had their meanings extended until they contained within themselves whole batteries of words, which, as they were sufficiently covered by a single comprehensive term, could now be scrapped and forgotten. The greatest difficulty facing the, com the compilers of the new speak dictionary was not to invent new words, but having invented them to make sure of what they meant, to make sure, that is to say, what ranges of words they cancelled by their existence. Now, the term atheist, if you ask me, is one of those things that tends to go in that general direction, at least in certain people's usage. It tends to sort of cancel a lot of stuff, as opposed to simply express a, a state of disbelief. Um, and it gets to the point where uh, that term belly feel comes out, where people say that I believe in an emotional sense that there is no God, and that anyone who is um, speculating that there's anything other than um, just a blank sort of, I don't know, soulless, uh, scientifically based uh, nothing out there, um, that that's all that the universe is, is somehow, um, well, again, to use another... Uh, Orwellian term, a thought criminal. Um, you don't belly feel atheism, so you're actually in danger of infection by that which you uh, supposedly left behind. Uh, do I belly feel atheism? Probably not. <laughs> um, but I think that a lot of people do belly feel atheism. They have an emotional attachment to the term. Uh, am I? Do I really want to argue that point? No. But it does come out when a lot of people use um, language such as, this is a dangerous idea, this is leading you in the wrong direction, this is something that's going, that you're making a big mistake when you go down this road. Um, well, mistakes are part, uh, part and part of the course. You have to make mistakes. You have to... Uh, take detours that lead the road to hell before you can actually get somewhere in one's thinking. In many ways, you, uh, you have to make the mistakes that lead you to the wrong direction in order to actually understand what error really is. Um, so I don't really think that there is such a thing as heresy um, in a fully rational and fully uh, open-minded set of speculations. I don't think there's any place where you should avoid going. I understand the need for physical and mental self-discipline. In other words, if I want to, say, delve into things like Satanism, I have to, before I do that, I have to sort of, um, I don't know, uh, swear off um, harming anything or um, doing anything that is too disruptive. But once I've, uh, once I've gone for that uh, basic set of behavioral uh, and perhaps um, oral uh, self-discipline, I can allow my speculations and my thoughts to go in any direction that I want. There's no fear of infection there. There's no, I 
don't think that there's any reason why I shouldn't speculate on anything, provided the ground underneath my feet is solid. In other words, my actions, my thoughts, or not my thoughts, I suppose, but what, my word and deed is going to not really be altered that much by what I speculate on. Um, Self-discipline is the key. <clears throat> so let's say that you do actually, or you don't <laughs> believe in God. You don't believe in gods. You don't believe in divinity. But you haven't reached the position that there's nothing, that it's just lights out, that consciousness is just a function of the physical universe, and that um, there's really nothing to be learned. We've our, we, we really know what it is uh, beyond reasonable doubt, and there's no point in speculating any further. Let's say that you're, okay, maybe you, in some sense you do accept that, but you want to speculate further. Is that a mistake? Hmm. Thank you.